Welcome to another video here on my YouTube channel. So I wanted to talk about Harry Potter and the many different ranges of collections because it is actually my favorite fandom. I actually dabbled in Harry Potter videos for a bit, but decided that I was going to do that. So here we are talking about the two things that are basically blended together, makeup and jewelry and fashion. And I do have some things in my personal collection to share with you and some things that I just have photos that I will throw up and kind of just discuss my thoughts on them. So the first thing I want to talk about is jewelry and I do have quite a collection of Harry Potter jewelry. I have some necklaces. I'm wearing a Slytherin locket right now. These are the ones from Kohl's. I have a bunch back there on that triangle looking jewelry holder and I do have some Alex Anani and Pandora bracelets. Well, one of each I should say. So here we have the Pandora one and this is beautiful. I love that it's a hoop. I have two charms on here, a Hufflepuff one and the Hogwarts castle or crest. It is double-sided and the closure is actually the snitch, which is super cute. This does come in gold, but that one's a little more expensive. So I have this one and I do think it's so nice. And it says I open up the clothes on the actual bangle. And for the Alex and Ani one, I have only one from the Harry Potter collection. It's the Amortentia and it's in rose gold. I love this one. I think it goes perfectly with the theme of, you know, love. Um, and I actually got this for a really good deal. I do think some of the bracelets are like a bit cheesy. I don't like Alex and Ani, like beads. I don't know if they're Swarovski crystals. I love these because I can wear a bracelet but still show my love for Harry Potter and these necklaces again i just love bringing in touches of harry potter to just incorporate into my everyday style because it makes me so happy and now that i am like older i am all for like outwardly dorky obviously harry potter things but i also appreciate things that look a bit more adult a little bit more toned down people have to really pay attention and see that it's harry potter themed and also i have these earrings that i actually just got they are from francesca's and it's one of those ones that you string through and it's a lightning bolt and i also got another pair of earrings that have lightning bolts that are like hoop style so again, I love buying things that just remind me of Harry Potter. These aren't Harry Potter, but the lightning bolt, like I said, is obviously quite Harry Potter. This video is actually sparked by the Ulta Beauty Collection, and I took a look. I did buy some things, but there are some things I just want to discuss. So the Ulta line includes lip products, hair ties, makeup brushes, palettes, and I believe that is it. So I only bought lip products. I have the lip glosses, I have two shades, and the lip pencil. I actually already filmed this video, but then the audio was weird, so here I am filming it again. So I actually have my thoughts fully collected. So the lip pencil has four shades. I have the shade Expecto Patronum, which actually reminds me of Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk 2. I thought this would be a really nice topper. They describe it as a peachy brown nude. They also have Hogwarts, which is a moth plum, um, Order of the Phoenix, which is a deep wine, and Amortentia, which is a moth pink. I feel like anyone can find a shade that they like. I was a little scared because I have never tried any of Ulta's formulas before, but this one is so, so pretty. I actually have on the gloss that is the Howler gloss on my lips right now, and this is a rosy pink, and the other gloss I got is 9 and 3 quarters, which is... A, like peach shimmer but it honestly just looks clear with a bit of shimmer this is nine and three quarters these glosses are a bit thick they feel quite soft they make your lips feel really smooth I feel like there's something about the scent that is a bit strange maybe I'm just not used to the scent I think it's supposed to smell sweet but to me it smells like really fake and strange but I do like the packaging I love the big applicator if you have a lot of lines these type of milky shades it does like go into the line so i'd be careful but i think the shimmery ones you'd be okay with and these are the only two like warm shades the packaging of the other two which are hedwig and spectra specs are so beautiful but i just know i wouldn't wear them because i was honestly afraid of how they would look on the lips and i wasn't even sure if i liked the formula but the formula is very nice however wiping off the lip gloss is a bit um tacky 
The pencil is very, very nice. I am a fan. So I just applied the lip pencil with the viewfinder. It goes on so easily, and I do love that this is a twist up. You do not have to sharpen this, which I think is so awesome because I like sticks, but I hate it when you have to sharpen it. It's just so inconvenient. The packaging is this nice, like, I don't know, it's kind of matte feeling, and I love that the shade is at the bottom. Very, very cute. I kind of want all of these, honestly. The one lip product I don't have is the color changing lip balm. And that looks like an orange, but I'm sure it changes into like some sort of pink on your lips. And I wish I could have gotten that one, but I could not. So we're going to move on to the accessories. So they have the hair ties and the hair ties, they are cute. I don't like that they come in like a whole pack because if you are someone that doesn't like to buy everything like if you like to buy house specific stuff you're not gonna want to buy this i mean i didn't want to buy this i am thinking about maybe starting to wear all the houses because there are different colors and i don't want to just wear yellow because i'm a hufflepuff um two of them are velvet which honestly i don't like for curly hair specifically it's not very good for the hair and then the other two are more of a silky material which is fine so i wish they like didn't do the velvet i just don't understand velvet scrunchies. I feel like they're not paying attention to hair texture when companies make these scrunchies. So next we have the makeup brushes which are Deathly Hallows themed. I do love that. I like the white bristles with the clear with black smoke barrel. I think it's the barrel or the wand of the makeup brush. I forget the parts. I like that. I like how they broke it up into the different Deathly Hallows and the one is just all of them combined. I like the black and white color palette. I don't know if I'm going to buy them because I don't think they're synthetic. They don't look synthetic to me. So I'm going to pass, but I do love the aesthetic. And also white makeup brushes just are not my friend because and brown. Then we have the makeup bags which are cute. I love the canvas. I love the lining. It's so pretty. However, the tassel scares me because it looks like it'll fall apart and tassels just get really messy. I love that it says the house on the back. I think that's really cute and it says the description and I just don't like how it's flat. I don't understand makeup bags that are flat like it doesn't fold out and there's no like paper bag bottom where you can place it down it'll stay so I don't know how much you'll be able to fit in there maybe it's just for the palette and lip products but if you were to use that for anything other than something flat like you won't be able to hold a lot of stuff in there so that's why I didn't get it so everything else is pretty okay but the one part of this collection that really disappointed me was the palettes I just feel like these palettes were done so lazily and I hate to say that because I'm sure people worked hard maybe they didn't who knows but it looks like they were designed by people that don't really know much about Harry Potter like when you look at the color schemes it just does not all tie together and there are colors in certain palettes or shade names that I don't think makes sense like in Gryffindor there's a the color peach I think that they could have moved certain names to other palettes to have it make more sense and more cohesive so first let's go over Gryffindor and the overall color palette is very warm and rosy. The colors that don't make sense are peach, autumn, pure, chestnut, mandrake. Come on, mandrake needs to be in Hufflepuff because of Professor Sprout. They don't even have the like head of houses in here. I feel like they could have done that. Um, chocolate frog, you know, some of it is really cute. Howler, cocoa, like cocoa by the fire, I understand, but I just don't understand most of it. There are so many names they could have chosen, like sword or um, lion, just things like that. Fat lady, come on, there are so many options, but they didn't use any of the options that are, you know, kind of obvious or that would be fun, that would emote more emotion in people. Next up is Slytherin, so they have pebble, fluffy, moon, barren, herb, elm, ivy, toad, and black lake. So they have some plants in there. Pebble is kind of weird. Moon is also kind of weird, but they do have the silver. Um, they don't have like a true green. Too much of the names just don't make sense to me. Elm, maybe they're talking about like a wand, the type of, you know, wood. Black Lake, they could have included dungeon um, because the common room is in the dungeon. Just simple things like that. It, uh, 
just does not make me excited when I look at these palettes. Next we have Ravenclaw. So they have Natural, Fang, Beau Batons, Hedwig, Pidwigin, Ghost, Bark, Pixie, and Twilight. Again. Some of these names just don't belong in these palettes. Bobaton, I understand. I believe Fleur went to the Yule Ball with a Ravenclaw. And again, it's blue, so they were able to include it. But natural, Fang, especially Pidwigin. What is he doing in this? <laughs> he is Ron's owl. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, Pixie, Twilight, I get that they like included blue items. They could have included diadem, things that actually related to Ravenclaw. Hedwig, I'm not sure why she's in here. It's just all very interesting to me. And lastly, we have the Hufflepuff palette, which isn't even on the website anymore. Maybe it's sold out. I'm a Hufflepuff, so I was really excited when I found out about this because I was like, wait a second, will I be able to buy a Hufflepuff palette? And I looked at the names and I was like, okay. So we have Sherbert, Sunset, Lumos, Golden Snitch, Galleon, Earth, Honest, Rust, and Burrow. It just doesn't make me excited. The color palette is a little weird. It's like mauve. They included a gray, maybe because they felt like they had to include some type of grayscale color because of the colors. But I felt like a almost black or dark gray would have made more sense than a light gray because... I don't know. I don't even know how I would use that color. It's not a transition shade. This palette I think should have been more warm. So that's why I'm kind of upset because I don't gravitate towards cool tone colors and they already had Ravenclaw and I think Slytherin was quite cool toned as well. So I was just kind of sad at this. But I do love the graphics on the front of the palettes. I think they're really pretty. The last brand I want to discuss is Vera Bradley. So they now have a Harry Potter collection. I found out this morning. So I was really excited to tag it on to the end of this video and their collections are really beautiful. So they have three collections basically. They have Home to Hogwarts, which is the overall classic Vera Bradley style, which is that very printed, colorful type of style. And in that print, they have glasses, the crest, a time turner, keys, a snitch, and Hedwig. And I love the floral kind of design. And honestly, oh, it's so beautiful. I never liked Vera Bradley up until this point. So this collection is speaking to me very expensive, I will say that. They have a more simpler Hogwarts collection, so it's just black and with some white detail with the crest. And again, I think that's really pretty too. It's very chic, um, very simple, you know. If you don't like wearing prints, I think this is awesome for people like that. And the last part of this collection is the house specific items. Now, honestly, I'm not a big fan of these. They're a corduroy. They look kind of juvenile not gonna lie, which is great. If you are younger and um, you like this, or even if you're older, I'm not saying this is like age specific. I personally just think they look kind of like very like for school. So I wouldn't buy any of this stuff. But maybe to some people it would look kind of nice. I just don't understand the corduroy. It's very cozy. So it's it seems like something Maybe that's why, because it's corduroy, it seems like something that you would wear in the fall or winter, and that is back to school season, so I think that's why my brain is going there. But man, this Home to Hogwarts print is so beautiful. I really want something from it. I just don't know what. Maybe the makeup bag. It's to end this video, I just wanted to have a little chat about being a fan and all these companies coming out with these products and really tugging at our heartstrings because they are attached to these things that we love. I just want to say you don't have to have a big collection or even any collection to be a fan of something. What you have does not say anything about your love for a certain fandom. You can love it in your heart and not present it because essentially this is all consumerism and again they're trying to grab at our emotions to spend money and we don't need everything. It is nice that these collections are coming out and these brands are, you know, coming out with these collections. Harry Potter is something that's been with me for so long and I love that I get to age and still have things that are Harry Potter, you know, inspired and I don't feel 
too childish. It is fun to have certain things that are childish, like I have Legos and I love that. But when it comes to fashion, um, I sometimes want something chic, um, something more simple, something that someone would have to really pay attention to notice that it's Harry Potter or whatever fandom that I'm wearing. And I love that. I love the mystery and it just makes you feel like something you have is special in multiple ways. It's not only fashion, but it's also that fandom. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because, um, yeah, I don't buy too many things. I used to want to have a huge Harry Potter collection and I stopped doing that. I started being more specific about what I wanted to purchase and, you know, priorities change. So that's basically it. You don't have to have everything, but it is nice that the option is out there. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already. I hope you're having a magical day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.